Hey everyone, Brittany here. Right now it is early October. I'm just about to start back at fashion school after a short break. I thought that I might as well try to vlog the process of how I make my end of year mini collection. This is going to be documented at random over the process of a month or so, just leading up to the fashion show at the end of November. However, what I haven't filmed because it's already been done is how I designed the collection. As that was completed within a matter of days and it probably wouldn't have been all that interesting if I did film it. Most of it probably would have consisted of me complaining about not having enough time to do it and just internally falling apart. <laughs> However, I will show you the finished workbook as it will give a good direction to show what I will be making. I can almost guarantee that by the end of this I'm not going to look so happy and chipper because I had a full 12 hour sleep tonight and I won't be having that for a little while yet. I'm as excited as you can get. So let's get on to it. So here is the workbook that was made to start the assessment. I would just say beforehand this was made within a matter of days. I think we had four days to design everything, compile it all into a workbook. While I am very happy with how this turned out, it wasn't as developed as what I feel like it could have been. Our assessment criteria was to design a three look collection, so mine is based around the concept of space and futuristic fashion. It continues on to say that even though what I designed may not not be an exact prediction of what humanity will wear in the far distant future. It will work in reference to how past generations perceived how our own 2000s present would be like. This could have probably been written better, but it's the sense of wonder and imagination I want to present, not the aesthetic accuracy. Referencing back to styles of the 90s also links to childlike endearment, reflective materials, simple shapes and something that can be worn in an everyday sense. In regards to my target market, I focus more towards youth, so uh, teen, young adult market. Market. Just talking about the target market, what they may have been interested in in regards to styles and design, I also said here that the environment is to be worn in a relatively modern urban setting, so something that is both quite simple and easy to wear, but also is quite interesting in regards to design. Now into trends. One thing that is important when developing trends in a fashion school workbook is that you look for trends that are relevant for the target market. Even though this is a very generalized overview, I was looking into things like holographic materials, referencing back to the 90s, a lot of pastels, also quite a bit of pink, looking into designers of interest, what may have influenced them. What I found quite interesting is how they uh, simplify symbols around space and interstellar travel and these things and we can still recognize what they are but they are um, almost cartoonish in a sense and I wanted to be able to bring that into my own development. And when I say that I'm putting it into my own work it's not necessarily copying the shape or the style, it's more so understanding why they chose that and being able to reference my own other research and bring in to make something completely different. Styles of interest, so I was just flicking through a couple of magazines I had from Japan from a couple of months ago. So for this I was just looking into how they've used patterns and why I find it so interesting. So definitely a lot of 90s influence going on here, not just in the style of clothing but how the photos have been taken. Something that is really handy to do when developing a design is to look not just into the fashion market but look into what your target market is interested in in regards to entertainment and other things. Looking into how colours have been used in a scene as well as character design, it is something that I am actually very interested in outside of fashion so I kind of had to do this anyway. My initial thought was that I could design a couple of little mascot characters and have them influence throughout the collection. I thought that after a while it might be a bit too merchandise like which is kind of hard to relate it back so I ended up just broadening it and doing a couple of potential back designs for a shirt. And in regards to this particular design I wanted to bring a sense of endlessness because while I am talking about space and the future and all these things, when you think about space it is something that is so infinite and I wanted to be able to present that not just with stars and a black sky but be able to show that this thing never ends, this design never ends. Other things that could come to mind with this design is also things like uh, infinite portals or infinite dimensions, very sci-fi ideas but otherwise it is a very simple design and it can be interpreted in different ways. These are some shirt ideas I had waiting around for a while but they just didn't really work in my development. Mostly because while they are quite interesting and relevant to my concept, uh, they're not very practical. Looking into stars which is you know a common association with space but of course they symbolize so many other things too. And here is pretty much where the development really took off. So a few months ago I designed a bomber jacket and put it on my Instagram just for fun. It wasn't really for anything in particular and because I was so interested in actually making one of these for the collection 
I looked into fabrics that might be suitable for it. One of my favorite fabrics of all time is shot silk or anything that is shot, which means that when you have it at different light angles, it changes color. I have a whole heap of holographic pleather, which is also the backdrop of this video. I thought this would be really good for making these star designs because it doesn't fray, it's quite a thick material and it's quite sturdy. Trying stencils, this was very quick and very brief, but it's once again another way to be able to bring symbolism in a very simple way into a design. So developing more on the bomber jacket, I wanted to see how the different colors would affect the body because the way you apply color is quite important. When fabrics are lighter or darker, it can make quite an impact on how the body looks. So it's really good to do various lay plans and figure out which generally looks better. In the end, I opted for something quite simple, even though I could have done something quite complicated. I think it would have just really detracted from the original design. Starting to look into t-shirts, I wanted to continue the raglan style, so wanting to try a raglan sleeve and some paneling. Continuing on from t-shirts, I wanted to see if I could print a design onto the shirt. So I quite liked this animation scene, so I wanted to be able to reflect that in a night sky scene. I thought that looked quite a lot like here, so it turned into a girl in the night sky. So it tried to depict a girl that's asleep and with her hair floating up into the night sky as she is dreaming. Seeing how a different placement can affect the design as well as trying different outlines and things. It's really just important to experiment because your initial idea is not necessarily going to be the final design. So looking into skirts, uh, wanting to complete my first full look. Once again, selecting fabrics, different materials, and I wanted to keep it simple. Once again, more designer research, seeing what works for them, and I wanted to start bringing development into a pair of pants. Uh, trying different style placement from very simple to quite complicated. More color development, uh, laying out sizing differences, as well as uh, doing texture layouts of the fabrics to see if it looks okay. I wasn't feeling very confident in how this was turning out, so I took a little break and started developing my third look. Uh, not all days of summer are going to be really hot, you want to be able to dress for the cooler mornings as well. Ended up going with quite a boxy look with a gathered skirt and hood. Kind of in contrast to the regular sweatshirt fabric you would use, I found this beautiful plush fabric. And considering it's still relatively lightweight too, I think it would be quite nice when made into a hoodie dress. Final development, seeing how star panels will work, and in the end I kind of opted for less is more. I wanted to be able to present stars on different parts of the entire collection rather than them all staying in the same place. So final development stage, sorting out colours on the t-shirts, what worked and what didn't. And then here is the final lineup, just showing how the designs relate to each other, so stars on different parts of the garment, as well as using similar colour palettes to show that this is all from the same collection. The first look is a bomber jacket with a star panel along with a t-shirt and denim skirt. The fabrics here are actually quite shiny reflective, this is a denim fabric with a metallic coat on top. The only thing that doesn't have a shine to it is the t-shirt, but it works well to to break that up. In regards to look two, uh, I kind of drew this at one o'clock in the morning so the pants don't really look right, but they will be a light denim fabric with star patches on the knees as well as the back pockets, along with a raglan sleeve panel t-shirt with a printed design on the back. And this is the final look which is the very simple hoodie dress. The fabric is incredibly soft and I can't wait to wear it once it's made. And these are the final proposed screen print designs that I'll be putting onto the t-shirts and I'm very excited to see what they will look like. So yeah, let's get on to the next step, shall we? So now that we know the garments that need to be made, the next step is to develop the patterns. Because I am making this pattern myself and not using a commercial pattern, I have to make up a plan and draw for what is called a block. A block is like a very simple version of a garment which has a perfect fit but is without seam allowances. Very much like a template that I can customize to look however I want. I am using the same raglan sleeve block for all of my upper body garments, so the t-shirts, the bomber jacket and the hoodie dress. Pattern making itself can be done both traditionally on paper or on the computer. At first it looks a little tricky but it's actually a very simple process. Also considering that I purposely made these garments loose fitting so they'll be much faster to draft up, I need to save as much time as I can. <laughs> the simplest patterns are the t-shirts while the more complicated patterns are the denim skirt and jeans so there is a range of difficulty at least. With the paper patterns, once they've been measured and drafted up, you just simply cut it out. Whereas on the computer, you actually have to go get the pattern plotted, which is sent to a special computer printer and it all draws it up for you, which is really cool. So then we go make the toile. A toile is like a mock-up garment that you sew up to see if the pattern looks and fits right on the model. 
It just really helps to clear up any mistakes or problems before committing to make the final garment. So I have about six individual patterns to develop. I'm doing four traditionally and Harry, I'm doing four of my patterns traditionally as well as two of my patterns digitally. Fashion School has this wonderful ability to go by extremely slowly as well as extremely quickly. Kind of every step seems so labor intensive and slow, but once you look back, a lot of work has been achieved. I don't know, maybe it's because I get so angsty about doing the next thing that I just have to focus all my energy on that rather than looking back and seeing that so much has already been achieved. They're both really important, but um, yeah, it's interesting. This is the toile for both the t-shirts and it's in a very nice penguin fabric I must say. It's meant to be pretty loose but not too baggy and it's just a little bit shorter than the common everyday shirt. It's really nice that there's only minor changes I need to do like bringing it in a centimeter and extending the sleeve a little but it's actually turned out a lot better than I expected and I think I'm just gonna wear this for an everyday fun t-shirt anyway so that's a plus. Because the bomber jacket and the hoodie dress are based on the same block as this t-shirt they are actually very easy to make the toiles for as well. Let's face it, these toiles aren't that pretty but they're just to make sure that the fit is right so it will really make a difference when the final garment is made. The skirt turned out really cute too I think, it's a little tight but that's an easy fix. However, there's always one garment that's a lot more problematic than the other ones and for me that was the jeans. Construction wise, they're fine, there's nothing wrong with how they were made. Aside from the fact that they are two sizes too small and I can't even get them over my legs, so uh, that's a problem. My bad, but that is exactly why we test these things. Unfortunately, going from the toile to the final garment isn't as easy as this. There's a little bit more work involved. Let's take a little break from making the clothing for a minute. To complete a look, you gotta have shoes. Because my clothing has been designed for an everyday setting, I want my models to look quite comfortable. So my first look, as well as my second look, have these simple sneakers. Whereas my third look, which is the hoodie dress, has this sneaker-like shoe with a chunky heel, so it's still relatively comfortable to walk around in. However, these white shoes are a little boring, so to fix that, I sewed a little holographic star on the side of the shoe, which draws attention and also works with the style of the collection. So here's a mini DIY in the middle of this video but it was actually really simple to do. To create this I used silver thread, a hand sewing needle, pliers and scissors. With a little holographic fabric cut out the star shape. Since this pleather like material is a pain to sew and any accidental stitches will be visible, I poke a series of holes around the border of the star shape to work as a guide for where I need to stitch it. Secure the star using a piece of tape and sew around the edge of the star. I I tend to use pliers when sewing patches otherwise it can really hurt your fingers. You can probably secure it with some fabric glue instead but I want to wear these for a long time after the show so sewing them down is a better option. Always remember to remove the tape from the inside before the ends are closed though. And here are the final shoes. Takes a little bit of time but it's nice and easy and I love how it catches the light. So here's the thing about making clothing collections or anything creative really. Always expect something to go wrong. Back when I was designing the looks I was told that if I knew how to do screen printing then I could develop some drawings to turn into prints for the collection. Personally I absolutely love screen printing so I made a couple of designs that were going to be printed onto some t-shirts. I won't get into details but now I no longer have the access to the equipment I need in order to make these prints for the collection. I purposely made these designs to be quite simple and easy to print but without the equipment I can't do anything. However this is when my extreme stubbornness comes in. There is no way I am going to put blank shirts on the runway. I designed these t-shirts that way and that's exactly what they're going to look like when they're done. Even if I have to go the extra mile to get this simple thing done it will be worth it in the end. So I called up my old high school of all places and they were kind enough to let me come in and borrow the exact same equipment. After a week of stress and trying to get everything organized it only took me a morning to get the prints done. So now I finally have the t-shirts ready for construction. So here I want the screens look like once they've been prepared. The areas which seem more transparent is where the ink passes through and prints the design. This is for the simple t-shirt and this is for the panel t-shirt and down here we have the little design that goes on the front of the shirts. Once it's been printed it looks like this. In the end this entire issue was actually a blessing in disguise. I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted and because this is equipment that's just been used up from the previous year it didn't cost me anything. So sending a big thank you to my old art 
teachers were looking out for an ex-student when they could have easily said no, which is something I have heard a lot lately. So now that the screen printing issue has been fixed, it's time to make the final garments. This part's a little tedious because I'm not making one garment, I'm making six. But I didn't actually have any major issues, aside from sewing on all of these star patches. The holographic fabric is a bit scary to sew with because it shows every little mistake. Like, I don't want to waste such a beautiful material. But with a lot of patience, they were all finally done, and they sit really well on the fabric. Aside from sewing, there were just a few little additional elements to put on the garments. These just being eyelets for the hoodie and hammering in buttons for the jeans and skirt. Otherwise, things just went really well, so <laughs> thank goodness for that. Uh, suddenly, it's the week before the fashion show, and I'm still trying to figure out how exactly that happened, but you know, we're just, we're just gonna work with it. Uh, I'm actually pretty on track. I have finished three garments, and I got three garments to make in a week, which probably isn't really on track, but anyway, we're gonna get it done, I'm pretty confident. The floor is an absolute mess, which is pretty commonplace, especially at this time of year. About to start sewing the bomber jacket, so I am going to apply the patch to it. These three are completely done, they've got the care labels and everything in them, so, I can just put them away and not worry about them. But I still have the skirt, the bomber jacket, as well as the jeans to make, which are actually at school. Harry! <coughs> Sorry, he's so loud. <coughs> Harry, as cute as you are, you make it incredibly difficult to make videos. <laughs> it's done, it's all finished. All of my garments are finally made and complete. Just about to hand them in and I'm so relieved. I'm more excited to just have it done than anything else at this point. If I was just making these garments at school, I would have finished these weeks ago. But the thing about fashion school and just university in general is that we have so many other things to do at the same time. I haven't been able to show it, but it's just been absolute madness throughout the entire department. Everyone's so tired and stressed and done. It's all worth it in the end. I'm really happy with what I've made. It's just when you're done, you're done. <laughs> um, hey, so this is me coming from post fashion show, currently overseas, but that's not the point. I was working backstage with the models, getting their looks organized, having to get some of them changed within a couple of seconds to push them back out of the catwalk. So it was pretty crazy. But hey, on the day I got a special fancy swing tag, so it's official, you know? The models were great who wore my looks and the only issue that I had was that the pair of jeans were actually too big for the models, so I can't win with this carpet. I ended up having to take the belt off that I was wearing to give to the model, but it actually looked pretty good, so I'm not complaining. And I didn't know this until the day, but my looks were actually first up out of the entire show, which is a little scary, but it all went well, I think. So yeah, that pretty much just shows everything that went into making this collection, excluding the stress crying and late nights. But otherwise, I am actually very happy with how this turned out. I will openly admit that this was not a complicated collection to make, but it's worked really well as a base so I can develop on them in future collections. I can further push those boundaries next year, which is something I'm very excited about. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.